the idea at first was to just make like jewelry, handmade jewelry. Um, so we went in that with that uh, vision. When I say we, it's me and mom. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's me and my mom. Who brought so, the other along to the venture? Yes, exactly. Well, uh, the other one brought the other. You know? Okay, so you brought each other into it? Yes, exactly, because we were like, um, she didn't have enough, uh, how to say it, like, um, I mean, courage. Courage. Yeah. And I was by then, back then, like, uh, I just finished my studies. So I was like, it's time, <laughs> we have to do it, it's time. Yeah. Especially with the coronavirus and all the hustle bustle that happened. Yeah. So we were like, yeah, it's time we have to do something together. And there is no partner bet better than your mom, honestly. Absolutely. Yeah, she would go with you to the top, you know, like, and she will just help you through it all and never give up on you and, you know. So growing like, up, did you used to see her create, like make those items, jewelry items? That's yeah. how you got inspired? Yes, okay. of course, because uh, my mom, uh, that wasn't like her, her job. Mm. She had her like corporate job, mm. but she always had this passion to, to over like um, towards uh, handcrafts and uh, you know, like colors, designs, mm. shapes. Mm. And it wasn't only jewelry, it was like also clay, um, rugs, Okay. We actually had the rug thing in our house, mm. like, and we were just making rugs. We didn't have like a design our, in our mind or something. We just started making these. Exploring them. Yeah. And we still have these rugs until now, like we still use them. <laughs> but you're so, more focused now, you're more, driv more driven to jewelry. Yeah, because um, just to say that she really loved to do a lot of things. So she would go from this to that, to this to that. And you grew up seeing all of that. Yes. And even like having a hand in, in like doing it with her. Yeah. So it was like a little different than just seeing it or just. So, so yeah, that's how it came up. We came up with the idea because uh, she did jewelry also. And whenever she made a piece, like she would just give it. Hmm. She's a giver, you okay. know. Give she it would away. just give it to like friends or family members, or and we're like, uh, and they really loved it. So we were like, maybe it's time to just like, like really do it like as it properly. Should. Exactly. To structure it. And, yeah. Yeah. Make it a profit-driven thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so how's it been working for you? Like, how long have you been maintaining the the, the, the physical shop in the old Medina of Marrakesh? Well, the physical shop, it's only like now over like uh, seven months. Oh, so yeah, so we're very new. Are oh, you blowing <laughs> up so fast? <laughs> well, I hope. <laughs> well, uh, com comparing to my past progress, you know, mm. like there is progress. There is <clears throat> like a physical shop is very important, mm. especially in, in this uh, domain, like you have to have a physical shop and have direct contact with the clients. And sometimes it's even better for them to just like come and see it for themselves. And of course, try it on. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah I will, I, like, I, I don't, it's, it's hard for me to imagine uh, ordering a piece of jewelry for me or for someone else mm -hmm. just online, because I really need to feel it physically and put yes. it on and see how it fits and how mm -hmm. it looks on my yeah. hand. So that's, that's how, that's why perhaps having a proper shop and having customers walk in and trying things for themselves mm -hmm. is, uh, is better. Yeah, it's, it's way better because even like uh, when it's custom, especially for custom uh, orders, like uh, they have to come and choose the, like the gemstones and the material, is it silver, is it brass? Uh, some people uh, also like would uh, order gold. gold. Um, but I would I don't do it myself the gold gold is very complicated. <laughs> why walk us through that? Why why is gold hard to work with? Um, it's not it's not hard as in it's uh, the substance. No, no, because gold is actually very very uh, very soft. Mm -hmm. But when you work with the metal, there is a lot of um, flexibility. Uh, no, no, more like uh, there is a powder of the metal. You know, when you work, mm -hmm. there is excess. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we call it le chute. Mm. 
and gold, you should uh, you should like um, you should try to make the to make the most of it. You know. Yeah, you because cannot have gold. leftovers. Yeah, you cannot yeah, exactly. Have... You have to control the leftovers, mm. not like silver or brass. And also, uh, its work is very complicated. So I just give it to a master artisan. Nice. So you take orders if somebody yeah. wants gold, but you delegate that task to exactly. someone else. Yes. Nice, nice, mm -hmm. very nice. Did you walk into this uh, venture well equipped in terms of um, dealing with people, communicate, selling? Was selling something that you had to learn, or did it come naturally? Well, because uh, I imagine people would you know, bargain with you and hustle, and you know. Yes, like, exactly. So, you mean in the physical shop? Yeah, yeah, in the, in the physical shop. Well, yes, exactly. Like uh, because ninety percent of our clients are foreigners, mm. and foreigners, when they come to the Medina, especially, they are used to bargaining. It's just something that they learn. You know, mm. if the, if you give them a price, they'll just give you half Cut of it. it. In half. Yeah. <laughs> So sometimes you just have to say no. It's like uh, it's my creations, or like um, it's original. It's not like I'm just I'm not just reselling. Like it's original pieces, and you mm. have to explain to them. But uh, the more you explain, like the more it's uh, they understand that they this understand. is an original piece. You're not a retail shop. Exactly. And yeah. I and I assume they would appreciate the fact that you know this is my. It's an art. Yes, I'm exactly. buying a piece of art. Yeah, yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you uh, and I imagine you do speak multiple languages as well. Uh, well, other than English, it's French, Arabic, mm -hmm. and little Tanazight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you a Mazirian? Yes. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, I understand it fully, but sometimes when I speak, <laughs> you do it's speak. It's a mess. It's a mess. <laughs> <All> yeah. <right. laughs> so you, you're. Uh, Amaziria from both parents? Like both parents. Both parents? Yeah. Did, you, did you grow up um, not speaking it at home? Well, um, <coughs> my parents, they are originally from Warzazet. Oh, okay. So it's two different villages. Mm. I'm not like speaking mm. about the city, it's more like the suburbs. Yes. Suburb area. Mm. But uh, when we grew up, um, I learned it more with my grandma because my, my grandma didn't speak Arabic oh, okay. or Darija. So that's how we learned it because uh, when they um, they moved to Marrakesh, my parents, like they just started speaking Derija, you know, like uh, well, well, it happens, it happens, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it was mostly with my grandma. Like my grandma is the reason why I learned. It the few words that I have. <laughs> By necessity, because the only way for you to communicate with her was through... 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 Uh, uh, That's good. Exactly. That's really nice. Yeah. Uh, back to the craft. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel intimidated at all being uh, a female, a lady, doing mm -hmm. this kind of job, which is, um, you know, predominantly male, you know, uh, governed? Everywhere you go, you only imagine uh, men who yeah. do ca crafts. Mm -hmm. It's very rare when I come by a lady that does uh, pottery or you know, jewelry or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is it intimidating that, you're, that there aren't too many like yourself out there? Well, um, it wasn't at all intimidating because when there are, I just learned that there are like um, levels of artisans, you know? Mm. There are like the master artisans who like uh, work the fine jewelry, you know, they can do anything really like um, and there are the artisans who just learned it not like they didn't have like a f like a, a Full training, you know, mm. it's just like from fa uh, father to something. Yeah, and in the Medina most of artisans are from this category oh. so they are uh, They are good at what they do but uh, they are kind of limited mm. so uh, artisans in the Medina they are known for like uh, certain techniques or and they just do this certain technique not like other things yeah but um, so I'm not really like uh, intimidated mm -hmm. especially when I try to like I wanted to learn it the right way 
Mm-hmm. So, what did you do when you wanted to learn more skills in what you do? Did you go to a master and ask them to teach you? Did you do that? Did you well, walk through that process? Well, I actually went to an academy in mm-hmm. Casablanca, mm-hmm. and it's called uh, the Academy of Traditional Arts. Nice. And you had a training there. Well, yeah, I had. I started my training there, um, and it was like that's where I got like surprised. Like the level is very high, and there are. Actually, in our class, we had more girls than boys. Oh, that's interesting <laughs> yeah. to hear. And uh, because not only they don't only teach jewelry, but other um, other crafts. Crafts, and it's always more girls than the boys. That is very interesting. And somehow, girls are really good at it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like especially when surprised. you would see like the third years um, uh, graduates, mm-hmm. and they have to give like um, their chef d'oeuvre. Oh, yeah. They have to present something that is out of the ordinary, you know, yeah. and and it's mostly the girls who are like really we'll come up with something very special. <laughs> and I was really proud. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could say the same thing about formal education. You walk into any school now, yeah. and it's any classroom, mm-hmm. and it's the girls who are doing better than the boys. Yeah, right. Yeah, I could say the same thing about school. For some reason, maybe mm-hmm. guys are not too committed. <laughs> you know, That's a little distracted. lazy, I guess. A li- I'd say, uh, being a teacher, yeah. uh, I, I'd say uh, guys are easily distracted, right? Yeah. They, they have an, I don't know, they have an issue focusing on, 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 a, on a task for some reason. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it surely has nothing to do with the cognitive abilities. I mean, no, I, I don't believe there's a, a difference no, between a, mm-hmm. my brain and your brain, right? Mm-hmm. If, if we are given a, a same task and we put in equal effort, mm-hmm. you know, the odds are we're going to come up with relatively you know, close results. Yeah. But if I'm not committed and I don't, I don't put in the work and the efforts and there's no passion, mm-hmm. especially that, then of course you would... Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm. What part of your uh, art do you, uh, do you enjoy the most? Walk us through it first. How do you perceive a, a ring? Or earrings. First, no, before that, you're you're loaded with jewelry. I'd yeah, say, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, could you just start with your um, that flower thing? Yeah. Oh yeah. Tell oh, us well, about that. Um, this is a ring. That um, actually, this one my mom uh, draw it. Okay. Because she draws. She's not like uh, an expert or like uh, an artist, but she, she's like she does it her own way, hmm. and she's good at it. Mm-hmm. So she draws the shape yeah. of the piece of jewelry yes, exactly. on a paper. Yeah. Okay. She draws it, and then she she just keeps the the space for the gemstone. She keeps it blank. Ah. You know, and then she starts looking for the. She, she see the she sees if she has the right stone for her, for her ring. Mm. So she uh, she found this this stone. It's fluorite stone. Oh, okay. And it's a really uh, beautiful green uh, stone that that goes specially with gold. You know, oh, we c- we yeah. see it in a lot of gold jewelry. Mm-hmm. It's like very luxurious, and so she just um, she chose this one, and we came up with this ring. Like this is the final result. Nice. It's, yeah. And it must be so special for you to to <laughs> to wear something that your mother created. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. Uh, can I take a close shot of it? Oh, yes, of just course. to add it into the. It's really nice. The, the, the green in that stone is just haunting. These are not from me, <laughs> okay. but this one is. Okay, you made that one. Yeah, I made this one. Yeah. It's also a fluorite stone. Oh, exactly. This is I a big that. one. Um, I think I love, I love fluorite. I think. <laughs> I mean, it's green. It's a beautiful color. Yeah, it is, mm. and it goes really with everything. Hmm. And um, so I just made it with the silver rings, and I just connected them. It's like simple, but at the same time, something that you would wear for multiple occasions mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. You know, like sometimes they say simplicity is uh, is like um, the new trend. trend. Or, yeah, of course, yeah. of course. And then, sahel uh, mumtani to create something so simple but yet so captivating. Yes, exactly. That's, that's a level of 
toughness mm -hmm. of difficulty mm -hmm. right simple doesn't mean casual it just or has easy to be like elegant and mm -hmm. like there is work but it has to look like uh, when you wear it, you're not putting too much work, mm. but you're doing little effort, you mm. know? Yeah. Something yeah. in between. Yes. And the... the yeah, the shape of that yeah, earring. Yeah, and is. these also. We have these in the small shape mm. and the bigger ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I like the symmetry of it. You know, that line yeah. on top of that circle. Yeah, that's her design also. Mother's She's, design. Yeah, my mother's wow. design. <laughs> Salute to your mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, before you create any piece of jewelry, you first conceive it in your mind, right? And then you put it on paper, you draw it, you mm -hmm. visualize it, yeah. right? And then? Well, and then um, after we choose the material or the stones or the... the um, we have to... We directly, like, start working on it. Like, we choose the... The plaque, mm -hmm. the plaque. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, we choose. I'm not sure about the words. It's I fine. Just Shoot it plaque, in the region, you know? in French. <laughs> Le blaca. <laughs> Le blaca. Yeah, people would understand. This this yeah. this podcast is primarily for Moroccans, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Super cool. Yeah. Well, well, we choose the right size for it because mm. they are thicker and they are like thinner, and and yeah. So I just start working on it. Nice, nice, mm. nice, nice. Mm -hmm. um, and I imagine it's such a joy when you f get to the final product and you yeah. see the fruit of that work. Yeah. How long does it take you to create a piece of, uh, I don't know, a ring, for instance, from beginning to end? Well, for I mean, hours in terms of hours. Well, for me, maybe mm. like um, four hours. Maybe some people can do it like in less time. Less time. But uh, I take my time. You like to take your time, <laughs> of course, absolutely. And it's such a joy, actually, to just... You're, like, excited to see the final result. There you go. Like, you fully indulge into the process. The making of it. Yeah. You enjoy the process. Yes. Yeah, I could say the same about, you know... What other, you do, right? Uh, me or... I you know, was with Ayub, oh, the guy yeah. who was helping with the yeah. setup. He's, he's a... He's a video editor primarily, and we were talking about that as well. Mm -hmm. He, the guy, enjoys the pro like spending a whole night in front of a mm -hmm. computer, you know, uh, yes. uh, finishing that puzzle. You know, he wants to get to the final product. Product, right? yes, exactly. It's the yeah. same. It's, it's the same, same feeling. It's mm. amazing. It's amazing. Um, what else I wanted to ask about? Um, so, you, did you see that this is something that you? Uh, want to continue doing and you see nothing else designing pieces of art i'd say and selling them well in my like uh, mon parcours mm -hmm. i never thought i actually do be doing this mm. because after i finished my studies i was in robat and i just what like everyone does you you apply for jobs so I was applying there. Can I ask, yeah. what, um, what did you study? I studied uh, business management. Okay. Yeah, and, and uh, what I actually wanted to do is work with NGOs, oh, not nice. like corporate work. Okay. I wanted to do like NGOs and so I had, I was already like a member of a few associations. Nice. Doing um, non-profit work, yes, humanitarian exactly. work. Yes, okay. um, not really like humanitarian, okay. but um, I want to do something more, uh, well, the one I'm still with them right now, mm -hmm. we, um, we promote human rights mm -hmm. through cinema. Nice. What's the, could, could you mention the name of the... It's RMCDH, okay. Association des Rencontres Méditerranéennes, Cinéma et Droits de l'Homme. Oh, nice. It's a very long name. It's very nice. Now, tell us about some of the things they do. What is it they work? How do they promote these human rights through uh, cinema? Well, what we do is that we choose a movie. Mm -hmm. Like, um, we're a group of... There are, like, uh, critics. Uh, critics? Critics, yes. Critics. Yeah, critics. Movie critics. Um, yeah. Movie critics, exactly. Moroccan movie critics who are very known and um, uh, there are like historians and it's like a very interesting group member sometimes just wonder how did I get there, <laughs> how did I make it with them, mm. like um, what they do is that they choose a movie every month 
and um, and it has to talk about something, you know, like um, if it's like women's rights or like uh, the right to for education or family or so it depends on the movie. Mm. So we um, we project the movie at the cinema La Renaissance. Oh, yeah, mm, nice. it's they are our partners. Nice. And then uh, there is a debate after. And the debate is mostly with uh, people who are um, like... Audience members? Other than the audience, audience. members, there are like uh, people who... It depends on the subject, mm. people who work on that uh, field. You know, mm. like if it's something about uh, health, mm. it's a member from health the ministry or the something. Ministry. Yeah, like Officials. professionals for, yeah. from the, the field. Mm. Mm. So yeah, it's like this debate with the public, with the audience, just to see like what's the what's the new stuff that uh, yeah. like it depends on the, the on the theme on the theme on the theme. Yes, nice, exactly. Nice, nice. Well, yeah. just the idea of it, to mm -hmm. have uh, the idea of having a debate, a discussion about yeah. the topic after projecting the movie. You know, that's that's interesting enough. Yeah, yeah. That's, like that's it makes you um, think more. Like you just watch, a, you d just don't watch a movie just for pleasure. Yeah. But sometimes you think about all the messages and all Absolutely. the what the director is trying to show or what he's trying to. Yeah, th th we can't even debate the effects of what mm -hmm. we consume visually yeah. on the person. Yeah. We are affected mm -hmm. by anything we consume visually. Exactly. So if you have a message, an agenda mm -hmm. uh, behind making a movie, then you could be almost certain that it's going to yes. uh, take effect, right? And bring about the kind of change that you want. Yes, exactly. Nice, nice. Um, so, 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 so two different worlds, you know? Yes, exactly. Working with NGOs and then yeah. being an artist and creating pieces mm -hmm. of jewelry. <laughs> How do you, do you see that they're two different and apart? Yeah, even if they are very different, mm. but I would still love to do both. them both. Nice. Because, um, the the associative work mm -hmm. uh, it's not like um, it's something that I like to do part time. Yeah. So you can if you can find the balance, mm. you can still do them mm. and even add more things like mm. Mm. To, you can still learn more and. True. True. Yeah. Uh, back to uh, your. Um, background and career and parcours. Mm -hmm. So you studied business management yeah. and of course just like anybody else in your stead mm -hmm. you were aiming you know for a job right mm -hmm. for the, the conventional life that yeah. everybody thinks about. Mm -hmm. And then you said you never thought you would be a shop owner creating something and selling yeah. it. Um, would you say you make the exception? Would you say you're happy where you are right now? I'm actually very happy and very excited because I still think I still have a long way to go. Like, I'm still not there yet, mm. but you know, like a seven months shop, it's not like. Um, a seven year. Yeah, I'm still a newbie, you know. <laughs> I still no, have. No, but you're doing, like, doing quite well, Masha, a lot. I've been there, you're doing an amazing job. Because Thank you. every piece I see there is really unique and there's so much value in it. And uh, as a newbie, you're doing very good. Oh, well. Thank honest, you, honest review. You. Honest I'm review. Huh? Honest <laughs> review. So, so you would, I guess, encourage people to, uh, to walk the same path, or to 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 not worry so much that they're not going to end up where they think they're destined to go. Mm -hmm. That they might study business. I'm sure your business management skills that you've learned in school have helped you tremendously yes, exactly. in managing your business. Yes, exactly. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say like, I wouldn't encourage people to do like the same as me because uh, everyone like goes through different circumstances and they have their own like uh, engagements and... Definitely. So as for me, I was like, like a free bird, you know, just freshly um, graduated right. and I still had my, I still live with my mom, you know, and... Mm -hmm. So it was like easy for me to just like take the risk. It's not like as for someone who's still, I don't know, like someone who's married with the family, with the responsibilities and just, I actually would think like it's good and bad, you know? 
but you always have to have that uh, as they say some mm. amen like a, if you safety net exactly you safety have to net. have a mm. safety net because for example if you have a steady job you have to keep that job mm. and maybe start doing something on the side maybe as a side hustle mm -hmm. and then from then you can see if it works or not because well it's known that not all uh, projects they are not like a success from the first shot of course and this one is actually i wouldn't say like <clears throat> even if because it's with my mom and actually my mom had a lot of failed experiences before mm. because even with her job she tried a lot of other uh, she tried to make like uh, to be um khiyata uh, she did khiyata she did a uh, touristic um, project mm. there it was going well but not with she wasn't with the right partner right business partner so it failed and then 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 and then Elixir and then you came. came. Yeah, then then you came. <laughs> a savior came. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's, it's a beautiful story, you know, that a, a mother and daughter complementing each other and a daughter coming in with enough skills that the mother didn't have mm -hmm. or lacked yeah, and complemented each other to create something. That's a beautiful story. Yeah, well, um, maybe a little corny, but like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, in marketing, everybody's, you know, you've studied that probably. Everybody's looking for stories now. Everybody's attaching what it is they do, yes. they sell with mm -hmm. a good stuff because humans connect and that's a genuine one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Well, to you too. Thank you very much for accepting Thank my you. invitation. And again, it's an honor for... You, know, you see, when I started this, mm -hmm. I had the idea from the get-go that I'm not going to be inviting celebrities only, mm -hmm. right? That's not the idea behind it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the podcast is called Morecast, and mm -hmm. my, I imagine I'd invite any interest in more, any interest in Moroccan, right, mm -hmm. to share his or her experience. And I've had issues finding um, enough female representation. It's, uh, it's easy to find uh -huh. a, a guy who's successful mm -hmm. or... Um, I'm not downplaying and saying that women are not as successful as no, men. No, I'm not no. saying oh. that, <laughs> but it's just I I thought you know I want to I want to bring to the to, the, to this uh, conversation into light or on record with anyone who's interesting enough. Thank you so much. Thank you.